everybody, Bill Nichols here, bringing you my second video of my Lightroom Zero to Hero series. So in the first video, which you can check out on the playlist that's on the left, as you're looking at it, the playlist that's on the right hand of the screen, the little info sign up there, just go ahead and click that, you'll see a playlist open up with a card. In the first one, I just went through an overview of Lightroom. I took you through the various modules, showed you some very basic tools and what to do. Today, I'm going to show you the Lightroom catalog, talk a little bit about the catalog, and then show you importing files and some options that you have when importing the files. This is going to be somewhat extensive. I want to really give you the information that you need, not run you through every single option like some videos do. I just want to really give you the info that you need. So to get started, we're going to create a catalog in Lightroom. I'm going to show you how it stores images. We're going to import some images, and I'll show you some basic options that there are when importing the images. All right, so to get started, Right now I have Lightroom open and I have a blank catalog. Um, one thing that I wanna do with this is I'm gonna go ahead and create a new catalog. So I'll show you that here. So with Lightroom open, and keep in mind, I'm on a Mac. So your menu on the PC might be a little bit different. Shortcut keys might be a little bit different. When I say Command Z, for instance, you would hit Control Z, etc. cetera. Uh, I am going to go through an extensive keyboard shortcut video here coming up. But to get started, let's go ahead and create, create a catalog. So I created a test catalog here. There's no images in it. This is a blank Lightroom, just like it opens. But I'm going to create a new catalog just to show you. So when you first open uh, Lightroom, it's going to have you create a catalog. So you just basically go to File, New Catalog. And it pops up and it says, you know, what do you want to name the catalog? So let's just name this um, Catalog 1. Create. Now, it used to be previously with Lightroom, as you got a lot of images into your catalogs, Lightroom would slow down pretty significantly. The architecture, the speed, and everything else has improved greatly. So I know some people that store all of their images in one catalog. I know people that break it up by year. I know people that break it up by personal and by professional. So depending on what your preference is, um, take a look at what you feel like you should do for your catalog. And... Um, see if you feel like you want to have everything into one where you can search across one big catalog for all of your images or if you want to break it up by personal work or maybe you want to break it up by family photos or vacations and whatnot. Uh, for me, I keep basically a client Lightroom catalog and I keep a, a personal Lightroom catalog. And then sometimes when I'm traveling, I'll make a landscape one that I will export from there into my main catalog. We've created a catalog now and I'm going to show you some basic catalog settings. So in the Lightroom menu bar, you can hit Lightroom, then you can hit Catalog Settings. It will bring up this Catalog Settings dialog. And let's just start a general really quick. Just basically tells you the location, where it is, when it was created, how big it is. And it asks you about your backup preferences. So you can tell it to never back up. So every time that you exit Lightroom, it's going to ask you about backing up depending on when you last backed up. So you can say once a week when exiting Lightroom, once a month, every time Lightroom exits, when Lightroom next exits, so that's just a one-time thing. It won't even ask you there, it'll just do it. Or you could say never. I just keep it on the once a week, and then I usually say don't back up. Um, I have had it bite me. I did have a Lightroom catalog go bad. Uh, I was able to recover everything because the images are stored outside of Lightroom. This is really the catalog data itself. Uh, file handling, this is where you can set your previews. So as you're working in, in a Lightroom and you're starting to work on, on files, instead of it happening to, Instead of it having to open a 50 megabyte or a 100 megabyte raw file, it'll create smart preview sizes. So you can tell it what size. So this is an auto 3440 pics. It'll give you, uh, you know, the total size of the smart previews right now is 148K because there are none. The preview quality, low, medium, and high. So this is actually a really big preview. I could make this down to say 2048, make it a high quality preview, but I've always left it on medium and medium has been just fine and then discard one-to-one -one previews. So as it's creating previews, that's gonna get larger and larger and larger. That will cause Lightroom to slow down some. So in order to, to help combat against that, you can tell it to delete these one-to-one -one previews periodically. So if you don't go into an image for 30 days, it'll discard those previews. And then metadata, I've actually never gone in here um, and changed anything in here. The only thing I've ever changed in these settings is right here, the file handling. I tell it 2,048 pixels because for me, the preview, that's plenty big. Um, so now we've got a library, um, I mean a catalog, there's nothing in it. So we're going to go ahead and import just a quick set of images and I'll run you through some basic stuff when importing. So we click on the import dialog, Now I have some cards and everything. So I'm going to go to this EOS digital, I'm going to go down to a uh, folder here. Now I don't want to import all of these, so I'm going to click uncheck all. I'm going to click on the first image, all the ones that I want are right in a row right here. So I'm going to click to the end. I'm going to click a check mark, 
And it tells me right down here that I've selected 15 photos. They're about 250 megs. And up here is are my choices. So I can copy it as a DNG. I just leave it as a .cr2 raw. Um, I have it copy the photos to a new location and add to catalog. So with this, what it's going to do is wherever the photos are now, it's going to leave them there. It's then going to make a copy in a second location, then add them to the catalog from that location. I can also move them, so I can move them from, the, from source A to source B, or I can just add them, meaning that I could keep them on a card if they were there, or on a drive, and then just add them to the catalog and not um, copy them anywhere, and they would just stay there. So we're gonna do copy. Um, I'm going to tell it to build smart previews. I don't need to worry about importing su suspected duplicates. If I wanted to be really safe, I could tell Lightroom to make a second copy to a different location. So if I click that here, I can then browse and tell it to make a second copy. So I would get them to one location to which they're added to the catalog, then a second location just as a backup. I don't generally do that. I can add them to a collection at this point. So like I know that these are landscape photos. So I could just make a quick collection really quick. I could name these landscape photos. And if I wanted to set it as a target collection for, for future stuff, I could, but I'll just say create. Now it's going to, it just created that collection. It's going to add all of these photos into there. I can rename the photos. So right now it's going to do a custom name sequence. So in that custom text, now typically what I do is I'll do the date. So I don't know what day these were taken, but let's just say it was today, which is March 9th. I like to do something like 03, 09, 2016. 2016 uh, San Francisco so year month date location I can tell it when to start I can tell it whether if I want to change the extension or not and it'll give you an example down here so this is going to be named 0309 2016 dash San Francisco dash one and then apply during import there's a number of things that I can do during import so I can do some basic toning so I can say auto tone I can apply some presets. I'm gonna tell it to do nothing because I don't want it to mess with the images. Metadata, I can make some new, I can make a metadata preset and have it add that. So that could be my copyright information, could be a bunch of different information, or keywords. So I will add keywords at this point just to make it easy. So I'll say San Francisco, ocean, beach. This is Marshall Beach, actually. You could say Golden Gate, um, water, waves, sunset. 2016, March. I know that this was taken with a Canon, so I'll say Canon. And then, so I've got that. That's all the keywords that I wanna add. And down here, it's gonna ask me about the um, location. So right now it says organize into one folder, into subfolders in there. So it is just gonna put these in the root of pictures. I don't wanna go there. So I'm going to go to a different drive Let's just go down here to this OWC external drive since this is just a sample. So I can click here. I will say into subfolder. And with this, let's just say um, San Francisco images. Now you can see down here, it's going to make a um, San Francisco images folder. If I wanted, I could say by date or by original folders. So it would do a further subfolder on the dates that they were taken. For this, I won't, I will just say into one folder. So it's going to go in this OWC hard drive under a folder called San Francisco Images. And um, right now I can just say import. So it has now imported them and it is building smart previews. You can see the progress up here where it says building smart previews. Now these might not be the best images because they're straight out of the camera. These are raw files. They've never been edited. Nothing's on them. So let's go ahead and open one up. We'll grab um, this one here. Actually, not bad, right out. So um, when I took this image, I had a Lee Filters Foundation Kit on the front with a circular polarizer, with a gradual ND, and with a little stopper in there. So I had about nine stops of, of, um, of attenuation on the light at the top. The whole image had about six stops of, of light being blocked or being, you know, six stops difference. Then I had a polarizer on there for reflections and for detail. You can actually see the line here where, where this happened. So now I can look in here. If we go into the library, I can see that this, um, this brought it in. This is 0309 san francisco 7cr 2 I can see the location of my catalog over here. 
I can see the collection. So I have landscape photos. It's in the landscape photos collection. And I can look at my previous import and it's these 15 images. So that is uh, really quickly how to create a catalog and how to do a basic import of photos. Now what would have happened earlier when I said I didn't want it to do anything, if I would have said go ahead and apply auto tone, it would have just done this. So this image would have looked like this on import instead of looking like this. I always have it import and not do anything because I want to have full control of my edit for my photos. So we'll go through just another couple of things in your catalog. So there's a few options that you can do to help you find your folders, your images, where they are on your drive. So right now, I've just done this one import. I only have 15 images. So if you can imagine that over here, I have this across multiple drives and I have 20, 30, 40, 100 different folders. It might be difficult for me to, in a bunch of subfolders, it might be difficult for me to find where these images are, where they're residing. So if I just come down here to an image, I can go either here, or I can go right here on the image itself. I can do a couple of things. So I can show it in Finder. So when I click on that, it's going to bring up a Finder window, and you can see it right here. So it is in the OWC hard drive, San Francisco Images, and there it is. I can also, if we go over here, if I say, um, right click this again and say, go to folder in library. You can see it highlighted the folder that it's in. This is great if you have a lot of folders and a lot of subfolders. You're on one particular image, you don't know where it is. You hit go to folder in library, look over here in your navigator panel and that's gonna show you exactly where that image is. Or if I say go to collection, I can jump directly to a collection. One last thing on your keywords. Now some of these, as you know, when we did the import, I put in Golden Gate, I put in beach, water, ocean, all the keyboards, all the keywords are right here. Now the Golden Gate's not right here. So if I wanted to, I can select an image, and I can just go back in here, and I can get rid of keywords as well. So I can just as easily back a keyword out. Now when I get out of here and I go back, you'll see Golden Gate is no longer there. So I've managed that keyword down. You know, I can do that across all of these. Another thing that I do really quickly whenever I do an import in photos is I want to do my selects so that I know which ones I want to work on. So I will really quickly go through and classify all these images, which ones I think are good, which ones I think aren't. And typically when I first start, I will leave an image as a zero, I will leave it as a one, or I'll set it as a three. And for me, a zero is an image I'm probably not gonna go back and look at. Maybe I'll even reject it. So if there's some obvious bad ones, I'll reject them. A one means that I'm gonna go back and take a look at it, and a three means I probably definitely wanna edit it. Or if this was a client shoot, it's an image that I'm gonna start with first. And if I have enough threes, when I, after I go back through and do my initial review, then I won't even go back to the ones. I will use just those threes generally and choose images for my client from there. So in here, really quickly, I'll go through. I'll choose this as a one. I'll choose that as a one. That one looks okay. I'll just leave it for now. Let's just scroll through. Like this one, I don't really like this layer that's going across here, this fog. And I've got, like, these are basically the same image, this one I like a little bit, I like this a little bit more than this. So this one I'll even reject. So if I press X, you'll see it's set as reject and you'll, it'll gray out. Now I can just filter that out later. So I like these, let's make that a one, let's make that a one. I like that a lot, I like the water coming up here. Let's make that a three and come back and a one. So now what I could do if I was just getting ready to start editing these is I'd go over here to my filters and I just say show me the rated images. Now to those 15 I have six. I can go through here and decide which ones I really like. If I want to edit any of them. Um, so again to reject a photo, X. If you want to unflag a photo, so let's go in and do that. We'll turn these filters off by clicking this little toggle switch. I have this rejected folder, I mean this rejected photo. I can right click it and I can, I can say um, set flag and I can say unflagged and that's back like it is. Um, I can click it again, and I could say set flag rejected. That was an X earlier, if you remember. And then um, if I wanted to unflag it from here without, the, without using the mouse, I could just hit U, and that would remove the flag. And uh, that is the basics of getting your images in, doing an import, choosing your import options, setting your keywords, and then applying an initial rating. That is the first basic workflow that I go through. So hope you found that helpful. Really quick video, just creating a catalog, importing your images, applying an initial rating. In the videos to come, I'll start getting deeper and deeper as we go. I wanna give you piece by piece so that you get a little bit of information that you can remember, that you can go and practice, and that you can try out.
So thanks for joining me today, Bill Nichols. BillNichols.tv will be the website coming up, but thank you for joining me for my Zero to Hero Lightroom series, the second video of the series. If you have any questions or comments, comment below, like, share, and subscribe. If you have any ideas of videos that you wanna see around Lightroom, then uh, let me know down below. I'm still developing everything that I'm gonna do over these 30 videos, so if you've got a really great idea, I'll probably work it into one. Until then, come back, join me later on this week for another video. I'm gonna try and put out three to five of these videos a week. And I look forward to uh, taking you through Lightroom.